Hi, my name is Philip and I've been a professional tutor for about nine years. But did I really get 340 out of 340 on the GRE? Yes, I did. And I'll be showing you my score report to prove it in a second. Before that, here's a little bit about me. I've tutored and taught in a public school in London for about five years. And since that time, I now tutor privately for the GMAT, the GRE, and about 20 different exams in total, from medical entrance exams to consulting exams. Could almost say that I like doing exams. Does that make me unusual? Yes, it makes me strange and I'm kind of proud of that. But you didn't click this video to hear my life story. You wanna to get to the bit about the GRE and 340, right? Because that's why you clicked on the title. So let me cut to the chase. Here's my official score report for the GRE. And you're probably wondering, am I peed off that I didn't get a six out of six on the essay? And instead I got a 5.5. And the answer is not at all. I'm just kidding, I'm really annoyed about it and I wish I could have done better. But oh well, I'm dealing with it, I'm getting therapy. I'll come through this okay. 5.5 is not too bad. But how did I get that 340? That's what you wanna know. Well, for the low one-off price of $999, you can find out. I am kidding, there is no price. I'm just gonna give you some tips and pointers about what I did having worked with over a thousand students across 10,000 hours of tutoring. These are the tips that I think are best for you to improve your score too and get that 320 or 330 plus. It boils down to three words, practice, practice, practice. Now wait, before you close this video, I know that's super cliche, but I mean each of those words individually. What does the first practice stand for? It stands for practice questions. Exams like the GRE and the GMAT, they ask questions in a different way to most exams you've seen before. It's not a rote memorization test or a pure math test. It's closer to a set of riddles that you need to untangle. The GRE is like a triathlon. It tests specific skills in specific ways for a specific time duration. That's why practice questions are so important. There's no substitute for preparing for the race that you're gonna be in. If you haven't done several hundred, if not a couple thousand practice questions, then your brain just isn't sufficiently adjusted to the test that you're gonna face. Before I get to the next practice, let me just say one thing here. Intensity matters. I condensed my studies into two short months. And while I had many other advantages to help me get the 340 out of 340, I really think this helped me pick up on the nuance of each question type in the GRE. I always say to students, it's like kicking down a door. It's no point giving it a hundred little taps and hoping it will fall down. You need to give it one big kick. And the same thing for your study. Try to build up a certain intensity to your study and that will allow your brain to spot patterns that it might not have otherwise spotted. For example, I appreciated the quantitative comparison questions so much more when I realized how easy it was just to pick numbers most of the time. I learned to notice the mistakes I was consistently making with sentence equivalents and how to avoid them. And what you need to remember when you're doing practice questions are that wrong answers are your best friend. Wrong answers contain nuggets of wisdom about what you need to focus on in your ongoing study. Instead of being embarrassed about wrong answers or disappointed about wrong answers, you need to seek them out because they are the best opportunity to learn. Too many students, when they've made a mistake in a practice question on their GRE, just move on because they don't want to think about it. But I encourage you to dwell and reflect on each mistake and write up what you could do differently next time. Maybe you took too long because you didn't pick numbers. Maybe you're reading the passages too hastily, meaning you have to go back and read them again. There are many common mistakes you might be making and you're not gonna really understand those mistakes until you focus down on why you're getting the questions wrong. Remember, wrong answers are your best friend. Except in the real test, obviously, in which case wrong answers are not your friend, you wanna kind of avoid them. If there's one thing, honestly, that separates a 320 or 330 plus student from the rest, it's a relentless hunger to never make the same mistake twice. That's one of my biggest secrets, honestly, to getting a 340. Every time I made a mistake, 
because I would make plenty of mistakes in practice questions. I would sit down and be honest with myself. Why did I make that mistake? What can I do differently next time? Why will I never make that same mistake twice? Which brings me to the next practice, self-practice. Give yourself micro questions to test individual skills. Time your speed answering them. For example, can you find 20% of 600 now in the next three seconds? You don't want to be fumbling with a calculator. You want to be getting the answer right instantly. Just to take that example, how would you do it? First, you'd find 10% of 600, which is 60. And if 10% is 60, 20% would be 60 times two, which is 120. Boom, five seconds and we've got the answer. No need to click on the calculator. Also, no need for those pesky decimals or fractions that I see a lot of students using. Honestly, a question like 30% of 700, you should be able to do that, boom, in your head. Or take increasing a number by 15%, either in your head, if it's an easy number, or using your on-screen calculator. You should be able to do that in five seconds or less. And if you can't, set yourself 20 micro questions to do. Increase a certain number by 13% decrease another number by 12% and take times tables. You need to know all of them instantly. And yes, that includes eight times seven and 11 times 12, the two worst enemies of any student. Every single second counts. And the final practice in my trio of practice, practice, practice is practice tests. I will be doing a whole video on this later but suffice to say that practice tests are the best way to test your skills and stamina for the full duration. There is no substitute for doing practice tests. Again, that is a huge differentiator between the students who do worse and the students who do better. I did plenty of practice tests. You've got the official power prep ones and you've got Manhattan ones, all very, very good quality. I did loads of practice tests and I didn't always get a 340. The mistakes I made on those practice tests and the stamina that I built up was invaluable to me getting that perfect score. Aim for 10 practice tests before the real thing. Yes, I know they cost money and it's an investment, but it's truly worth it for number one, not having to do the test again, for example, it can even save money. You might do really well on practice questions and self-practice, but until you've logged those hours doing practice tests without pausing, you're not gonna really know what your current level is and you're not gonna have maximized your potential. So if you started on a 300 plus, just doing these three types of practice, practice questions, self-practice and practice tests can have you well on the way to a 320 or 330 plus. But before I finish, I'm gonna be real here. The test is four to four and a half hours and that can be quite grueling. Your performance really can fluctuate and you might end up doing better or worse than you did in your practice tests. That's why you shouldn't be embarrassed about doing the real thing multiple times. Yes, I know this is not ideal, but I have seen students score 20 points higher when they haven't even done much extra revision. How? Just the natural variance of exam performance can explain those swings. I don't know, hypothetically, maybe one test played to more of your strengths than another one. Maybe you got more sleep on one of the days than the other days. Or maybe you just didn't have as many distracting people in the surrounding cubicles. Whatever the case is, don't be embarrassed about doing the test multiple times. So many people do it. Yes, it's $400, $600 and 10, 15 hours of your precious time. But if it boosts your score by 10 to 15 points, it is so worth it. So those are my very quick tips for studying for the GRE and getting a 330 plus. They may sound simple, but surprisingly few students actually follow this advice. You can really set yourself and your score apart by following those tips. At this point in the video, I probably should be asking you to like the video and comment and subscribe, but I might leave that to the end. What is this YouTube channel anyway? The honest truth is that this channel is my way of giving you some of the tricks and tips that I give to my fee paying students, but for free. I know not everyone can afford a tutor. So if you can't afford a tutor, these videos and these tips are aimed right at you. Yes, you, Billy, at the back. But what distinguishes me from all the other channels out there? First, I don't want to just focus on individual math 
or verbal topics. I want to take you through the whole test taking experience and beyond. I want you to comment with questions about the GMAT or the GRE or how to revise better or even life stuff like getting enough sleep, exercising and even budgeting. Yes, I even tutor people about how to save money. I kind of tutor everything basically. I want to tailor the channel to the questions that you don't have to pay people to ask. Second, I think my scores in the GRE and GMAT and many other exams show that I can walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Getting a 340 out of 340 shows that I know at least a little bit about how to perform well in the test. I think I can really say that I understand these tests and testing in general quite well. It's secrets, it's flaws, it's opportunities. Third, I want to make your journey through these tests and beyond just that little bit more entertaining and instructive than they might have otherwise been. And if I can achieve any of those things or none of them, I'll be happy. Wait, not none of them. That would be really disappointing. Yeah, no, definitely I want to achieve at least one of those goals. So yeah, leave a question, like the video, subscribe to the channel and enjoy your day.